Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, Hutch Harris! Lived in Portland my whole life. Uh, ever since I moved here from California. <laughs> no, I have been, I've lived in Portland for close to 20 years, uh, but I did grow up in California in the 90s. Uh, and if you didn't, uh, but you've seen a movie about growing up in California in the 90s, it's exactly like that. It's the sun and jocks, blonde girls and cabriolets. It's terrific. So this story takes place, uh, it's Cupertino, California. I'm 19 years old, just graduated from high school. I'm still living with my parents, working at a restaurant called The Good Earth. If you know what you know, it's a place that catered to hippies, but mostly served yuppies, uh, like most restaurants in Portland now. I worked with this girl named Kelly. Uh, now, Kelly's not her real name. I don't want to use her real name. Uh, but it's appropriate to call her Kelly because most girls I grew up with were named Kelly. In California, in the 90s, uh, this was probably the only girl I knew that wasn't named Kelly. Uh, she was tall, uh, she was blonde, she was really hot, she was 10 years older than me. Uh, she was out of my league uh, only because of all those things I just said. Uh, but I had a huge crush on her for so long. Uh, you know, probably we worked together for something like a year and I just, you know, had this huge crush on her for so long. Uh, you know, I just thought she would never like me back because she was just, she was way out, way out of my league. Uh, so one night, uh, all the waiters were going to, uh, going out to a bar after work. And she invited me to go with them. And I had to remind her that I was underage. Uh, and I couldn't go, but she told me she was friends with the bartender and it would be fine that she could get me in. So we go, we go to the bar. I get drunk. We all get drunk. It's great. I'm hanging out with Kelly. Uh, and she's flirting with me, which is a shock to me. And I, I you know, I do start thinking maybe this girl likes me. So at the end of the night, she offers to give me a ride home. Of course, I say, yes, can you please give me a ride home to my parents' house? <laughs> so she gives me a ride home, and as we get to my parents' house, she kind of, you know, pulls a couple houses past the house, pulls over and parks, and we start kissing. And this is forever ago, and I was quite drunk, uh, so I really couldn't tell you who initiated this, but based on what comes next, I'm gonna say it was her. So she's wearing this really short little black dress. And as we're making out, she lifts up her dress, and she has these tiny little lace panties on, pulls the panties down and off. Now, this is one of those memories that is like burned into my brain and my dick for life. I will never forget that. This is probably still the height of my sexual career. She unbuttons my pants, she pulls my pants down, she climbs over, you know, I'm sitting shotgun, she comes and she straddles me and starts riding me. And it is amazing. <laughs> now, I've had a couple girlfriends. I'm 19. I've had a couple girlfriends. I've had sex. I have never made a girl come as far as I know. <laughs> Not sure. But it starts getting really heavy. It's really hot and heavy, and she just starts moaning. She's just getting louder and louder. And I'm getting really excited, because I think, oh my God, uh, she's gonna come. I'm gonna make her come. 
just keeps getting hotter and heavier. And she keeps getting louder and louder until she just has the most amazing, earth-shattering diarrhea all over me. What do you say? <laughs> I mean, frankly, I wasn't that bothered. The whole experience, you know, it was shocking. <laughs> so we're just not saying anything. She slowly gets up off me and sits back down in the driver's seat. And like, we're just not saying anything. <laughs> and I knew I had to say something. So I just looked at her and very quietly I asked her, did you come? <laughs> she did. I mean, that was really the only thing that was really on my mind. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's all we said. Uh, <laughs> we, you know, we said goodnight. I got out. She drove away. So, like I said... I can't go inside my parents' house like this. <laughs> so I go to the, I walk up, I go to the side of the house where they keep their garbage cans. I just strip down to my underwear. I take all the clothes. I just throw the clothes in the garbage can. <laughs> Run up to my parents' door in my underwear. And then I realize that my house keys are still in my pants. <laughs> Run back. Open the can, nothing else is in the can. They're at the bottom. The can smelled already. I'm pissed drunk. I lean over to grab the jeans and just start throwing up. <laughs> and as if the night couldn't get any more perfect, my little sister and her boyfriend walk up to the house and find me hammered, just in my underwear, throwing up into the garbage can. <laughs> and my sister just looks at me and she says, look, what the hell happened to you? And I told her, I just had the best night. <laughs> <laughs>